Chapter 12 Elizabeth left early the next morning without saying goodbye. Friedrich had been asleep, but even so, she hadn't called out a farewell or written a note or asked Father to pass along a message. Had she really disappeared from their lives without a word? She won't be coming back, will she? Friedrich asked Father after dinner as he set up his cello in the parlor for his weekly lessons. No, son, at least not soon. Maybe some day. I fear it's all my fault. I always expected so much from her because she was so capable. I didn't consider her needs as I might have, being wrapped up in my own grief after your mother. I'd always hoped that when I retired, I'd have more time to spend with her, but now it seems I'm too late. She's caught up in that, that fanatic's idealism. Friedrich tightened and roisened, rosened his bow. I thought you didn't want to hear another word against Hitler in this house. Friedrich, surely you know I only said that for Elizabeth's sake. It's important that she thinks we're followers for the safety of all of us. I would do anything to protect you and Elizabeth, even join the Nazi party if it ever came to that. As much as I hate to admit it, she is right about one thing. If we oppose Hitler, we must keep our thoughts to ourselves. Do you understand? Look and listen. That should be our policy. Trust no one. Be especially careful around the neighbors and at work, except with your uncle, of course. Friedrich shook his head. Father, I am not the one. Father raised a hand. I know, I know. I'm far too outspoken and excitable, but I am vowing to hold my tongue and keep my opinions to myself. I said it was time to be prudent, not close my mind altogether. Friedrich swept his hand toward a candy dish overflowing with anise lo lozenges. But you continue to shop at the gro Jewish grocery, don't you? Father sighed. Yes, Friedrich. You know it is the only place I can get my lozenges, and that it belongs to the family of one of my students. Besides, this morning, the stormtroopers painted a sloppy yellow star on the door and hung a sign. The Jews are Germany's misfortune. I watched three customers walk up, reconsider, and turn away. It is not right. Didn't you just say, I said I would keep my opinion to myself, Friedrich. And I did. I didn't say one word in that store. I only bought some much-needed groceries. They cannot arrest me for that. At least, not yet. Father walked to the piano and played the A. Friedrich drew the bow across the A string back and forth, adjusting the pegs. Before he began his exercises, he looked up. Why do you carry on, Father, for the Jews? Wouldn't it be safer for us to go along with the boycotts? Father walked to him and put his hand, put a hand on his shoulder. I don't carry on just for the Jews, Friedrich. I carry on for you, too. Any injustice the Nazis impose on the Jews, they will impose on you or anyone else they deem undesirable. It is unconscionable. Will, will I have to have that surgery? asked Friedrich. I already made an appointment with Dr. Braun. A week from Friday, we will discuss it. For our safety, let us both promise that from now on, Father put his thumb and forefinger on one corner of his mouth and pretended to zipper it. He smiled, closed-mouthed. Friedrich nodded. I promise. But he doubted Father could keep his word.